several African countries because of excruciating economic problems, people are trying to go back to their ethnic militias. Um, in the case of Nigeria, uh, right now, young people who are disenchanted and frustrated with the system are being invited by the most reactionary segment of the ruling class to go back to their ethnic shells. Whereas in the drawing rooms of the rich, nobody talks of religion or ethnicity when they want to destroy and steal the wealth of the country. The question of sex is irrelevant. As a matter of fact, all the armed robbers in Nigeria, all the money they have stolen since 1960, has not been up to 191 billion naira stolen by an executive of a bank. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. A lady executive of a bank was charged with stealing 250 billion naira. She pleaded with the government, "Can I do plea bargain?" I will return 194 billion naira. Now, and I'm saying all the money stolen by arm robbers since 1960 has not been equal to that. But we are then told by the ruling class, aided by imperialism, that everybody should mind his own business because of the fear that if you have a united African country in Nigeria, 170 million people, that is one of the largest markets in the world. So for them, they want to keep us divided so that it's easy to rule us. Yes, and that is what is going on. Yes. Now, Prof, I've enjoyed your lecture. Very stimulating. I have one or two problems. Yes, Africans are corrupt, but I beg you, don't be tempted to jump to the conclusion of the West that stigmatize us as the most correct people on earth. On earth. It's not true. America, Britain are the worst corrupt nations on earth. <laughs> Prof, the Transparency International try to rank great corrupt countries. They say Nigeria is corrupt. Ghana is corrupt. Cameroon is corrupt. But Switzerland, that warehouses all corrupt money in the world, is never in that reckoning. <laughs> Secondly, sir, and I think that was the point Nkrumah was making, neocolonialism, the last stage of imperialism. Corruption, we must know, sir, is a manifestation of corruption. Because, like Fela said, Fela once asked me, I feel like you are a professor of law. Fela said, Femi, with all this, your funny law. <laughs> now, where did you get the idea of fraud from? Money laundering. If the Western people were not stealing, there would be no word like fraud. <laughs> no word like stealing. But fella then warned us, don't accept their language and their ideology. When you say money laundering, fella say, what is money laundering? But if you say a man is a thief, in the school, in the school, his children will be ashamed when you say your father is a thief. But when you say the man is engaged in money laundering, it means nothing. Please. And that, and that was when Fela was reminding us that they get the, the ruling class. Fela said members of the ruling class have ways of deceiving us. Embezzlement, defraudment. Make I remember another word, you know? Just to deceive people. But if we are going to organize Africa, sir, we need to 
draw a line of dichotomy between the countries that are getting it right and those that are exposing Africa to shame. You mentioned Rwanda. Rwanda, not just the cleanest city, has the largest number of women legislators in the world, ahead of the West. But here, you are told here, women are supposed to remain in the kitchen. Not to go to politics. And you know how they keep women away from politics? All, all the meetings of political parties are held in the dead of the night. Why? I'm talking of great ideas by lecturers, and you could pick and choose. And I chose ideas that could transform our continent. And when I went to practice, incidentally, I think Motoraya is left. Who has the question? Motoraya. 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 I practiced under her father, the late Alawa Kabashorun, and he was an African lawyer, uh, uh, was very close to Nkrumah, a fellow and all that. And that generation believed that Africans should be made to realize that we can solve our own problems. Uh, fellow sang about religion, and this is very important. Because I was just reading uh, Pastor Adeboye, who has just said that he wants to establish more churches so that everybody can have a church within a walking distance. Now, fellas sang about religion and the danger of religiosity as opposed to spirituality. Now, Okoji Akadina Okoji has just given a beautiful reply this morning that what Adebayo is talking about are business centers, not religious institutions. Please, please, uh, and this is very important, they want to know how our young people can have these progressive ideas. Ayo, I would like to suggest to Yeni and other organizers of celebration. Next year, please, have a session for musicians in Nigeria. Not just the show. Have an intellectual engagement with them so that you can get them to realize what it means. My own son, my son is a musician. And I asked him one day, I asked him one day, where are you getting these your ideas from? He said that you've forgotten that in your car, in our home in those days, you always play fella. And I have learned about singing for relevance in our society. The last one is about the elite. All of us here, including prof. Fella decided to drop ransom from his name. You know Fella was ransom Kuti. He dropped it and chose Anikula Kuti. And that influenced many of us to also change our funny name. Prof, by the way, I was also a Patrick, like you. <laughs> now, but I've thrown away that. But on our children, all of us can decide today. Because Prof made the point. We are all proud. When a friend visits you and you say, greet your uncle, you speak the same language. That does not happen anywhere in the world. The late Ganifa and me called my house one day. My last girl picked up the phone and said, who is speaking, please? And Ghani said, please give the phone to your father. Is that not Femi Falano's house? The girl said, yes. Why are you speaking English to me? And I, asked, I had to apologize. He didn't know you were, sir. In my home, my wife and I decided. Since we didn't learn our own English in school, I mean at home, we we're never going to speak English to our children at home. Now, that has paid off. Contemporary and friends of my children ask them now, where did you learn your Yoruba from? And I think all of us can decide to teach our children our native language. When we were in school, it was prohibited. They call it vernacular. If you spoke, if you spoke Yoruba in my secondary school, you would go for two weeks suspension. Thank you.